We've talked about the basis of evolution and we've talked about classification, but where did life originate from? So we're talking about now about the origin of life. So Earth was formed about 10 to 20 billion years ago. Geologists inferred that about 4 billion years ago the Earth cooled and we had the first solid rocks. So we usually say that Earth's history is about 4.6 billion years ago. <coughs> the early atmosphere of Earth contained poisonous gases like hydrogen cyanide, uh, nitrogen, hydrogen sulfide, and it also had some carbon dioxide and some water vapor. Notice what's missing here. There's no oxygen. <coughs> so life as we know it today could not have existed on Earth in the past, shortly after its formation. About three and a half billion years, years ago, water could remain liquid, and so at that time a primitive ocean formed, and the ocean itself was rich in organic compounds that formed from all of these substances and lightning and heat and all of those other factors that, that would be involved in causing chemical reactions to occur. There was a scientist named uh, Operin who came with, who had a hypothesis back in the 1920s that life originated by chance from the abiotic or non-living synthesis of organic molecules from inorganic molecules using energy from the lightning and sunlight. That was his hypothesis. He didn't have a way to experiment or to, to find evidence for it, but that was his hypothesis. So 1924, his, his hypothesis was called spontaneous generation of life, that life developed through natural, chemical, and physical processes. And this today is widely accepted by scientists because more is known about the mechanisms that could cause this to happen. Back in 1953, two scientists named Stanley Miller and, um, Miller and Urey came up with an experiment to support Hybrid's hypothesis. This is kind of how it worked. They had a closed system here that had uh, a place that boiled water and created water vapor. Into a closed chamber here, they introduced um, ammonia gas and hydrogen gas along with the water vapor there, and they used electrodes to simulate lightning. And they hooked it up and just let it run for a while, okay? So as the, the water vapor and the uh, methane and ammonia and hydrogen gases mixed together and the electricity was in there, uh, these gases were then passed through a condenser, which, which condensed the the gases down to liquids. The cooled water would then go back into the system and recirculate and they just let it run for a period of time. Uh, after a period of time they took a sample for chemical analysis and what they found was there were some organic molecules in there that had not been there before. There were things like amino acids and uh, various other compounds like that. <coughs> Later experiments have shown the formation of even um, nucleotides <coughs> by this kind of a similar kind of process. So they formed amino acids in a primitive atmosphere from inorganic molecules with natural energy sources and that kind of confirmed or gave some supporting evidence to Oprin's original hypothesis. <coughs> uh, the next, the next thing that happened after that probably was the formation of organic polymers like proteins and nucleic acids from those smaller molecules. <coughs> they may have formed on hot rocks or clay the first genetic material was probably RNA, uh, and there were enzymes called ribozymes, which served as catalysts for various kinds of chemical reactions. About three and a half billion years ago, the earliest life, uh, we have evidence of the earliest life forms on Earth in the formation of stromatolites. These are fossilized mats of photosynthetic bacteria. These particular ones are in Australia, but you can find them in other places as well. Uh, they, the, the bacteria still, the Cyanobacteria still make places like this, okay? But you find fossilized stromatolites all over the world, including even in Texas. These photosynthetic pro prokaryotes produce oxygen as a result of photosynthesis, and that led to changes in Earth's early atmosphere. The presence of oxygen in the atmosphere was poisonous to some organisms, but made life possible for other ones that were able to utilize that oxygen more efficiently and produce more energy, like we learned about in cellular respiration. So first, the first organisms to, to evolve were probably small par prokaryotes like cyanobacteria. Uh, those are photosynthetic bacteria. Over time, they could became symbionts in larger cells, producing eukaryotic cells which then lived in colonies, some of them specialized. That led to the development of multicellular organisms, and then organisms that had tissues, and then more complex organs with organisms with organ, organ systems. So it was a very slow process over a long period of time, incorporating one change after another in the, in the populations of organisms that were there. 
In the 1960s, a scientist named Lynn Margulis came up with a theory called the endosymbiotic theory. Her theory was that the earliest cells were simple prokaryotic cells of chemosynthetic bacteria and that eukaryotic cells arose from communities between those prokaryotic cells in which the prokaryotes were incorporated into and engulfed inside larger cells and became living symbionts within the cell. 